We're just leaving Little Dip Conservation Park after all this uh, adventure up this really skinny track. Looks okay here, but boy, it gets skinny at the top. So today, I've walked out ahead of them to make sure that no one was coming in. Luckily, no one was. But we've got in and we've got out again. That's good news. What are we seeing, Harry? Big lobster. <gasps> Do you like lobster? Yes. <laughs> you gonna eat it? After all the drama in last week's episode, it was a relief to exit Robe as much as we had fun there in Robe, uh, getting out was a success in itself and we were headed off to the Murray Lands in South Australia. We really liked the idea of the Murray Lands and how the mouth of the Murray is where the Murray exits out into the ocean. We've spent some time on the Murray River um, up in Victoria um, for some family holidays and liked seeing the other end of it in South Australia. So we also thought it was a good opportunity to do some fishing as well. And if you've got kids and you've been fishing before, you know when you go fishing with kids, most of the time you're actually untangling lines, uh, putting on new tackle and just loading on bait. So it's not really a fishing adventure for yourself, but it just so happens that we've entered a golden age for fishing with our kids. Got it. Yeah. Dude, where did that go? Wow, that was a long way. Yeah, I did. Thought it was going to get me. Okay. All my dreams have come true. The kids were interested in fishing and they spent a lot of time down there by the water. They basically fished for two days straight. They did. And all, unfortunately, we ended up with after those two days straight fishing was a couple of stories of the ones that got away. Like, we're not going to be getting away. Look at how he went through. He got a fish, but it was too strong and he snapped his line. Dad was about to get his snake. Pretty big. How big was the fish, Harry? This big. Pretty big. Wow, that would have been a good dinner. Yeah, it's all right. We'll keep trying. We had a super campsite right on the water, which was exactly what we've been looking forward to um, for our amazing. life of Australia. It's exactly what we imagined. So the boys were able to fish out on the water. I could sit and watch them. But there was also heaps more to do around the park as well. The boys rode their bikes around. There was a playground. There was a brilliant camp kitchen that had a huge chess set that Giant they chess loved. set. There was kayaks for hire. Um, there's a little mini caravan cubby house and of course plenty of swimming and fishing opportunities too. If you want to check out our full review for the site, there's a link just up above in this video. You can go and check it out and see everything that we liked about that caravan park in Meninji. So the Murray Land's taken a giant part of South Australia's southeast and the big ticket items when you're looking around in the Murray Lands are obviously the Murray River coming across from Victoria, the Murray Mouth where it exits out to sea, and the two what are known as the Lower Lakes, Lake Albert where we were camped, as well as Lake Alexandrina. And we were keen to go and check it out and do some exploration. We went for a drive and we heard that there was an Aboriginal settlement as well and there's something there that you might possibly recognise. How many people are in? Very quiet little town. Health centre. Mm. You may have a fifty dollar note in your pocket, and on it, if you have a look closely, you see the, a small church there. If you look behind me, then that this church, which is shown on the note, is here. I'm going to tell you all about this man on the note. We're in an Aboriginal community. His name was David and Napon, and he stood up for all the Aboriginals who were being treated unfairly. He was a great inventor, so he decided to invent some things which he put, which he then showed to the English people to show that they can be inventors too. Whilst we were checking out the church, we were approached by a travelling couple who were also on the road and they've been travelling for three years. Yeah. yeah, so we sort of picked their brain a little bit and they'd received a tip off from the local general store uh, operator who had been in there for generations, his family in this Aboriginal settlement, and he said there was a great lookout we should go and have a look at. Now, these were total strangers we hadn't met, and I hadn't watched Wolf Creek yet, so I thought, why not follow them along? What could go wrong? Here we go. Oh. Jets just met some people in the town of Narong, and they were told that there's a track up here out to the coast that's got a nice little lookout, so following them out, see where we end up. 
see what happens. Probably murderers, but you know, at least we get off the track to do it. Oh, another one coming. So I guess to answer the question about what's life like on the road, not planned, but it's a pretty cool little drive. This is Lake Alexandrina and we were speaking to some other travellers and they said to follow them along and here we are. It is a clifftop lookout and it's great. Lake Alexandrina was absolutely massive. Standing on that cliff face mm -hmm. looking out, it went as far as the eye could see. In fact, it's 650 square kilometres in size. And the Murray Mouth simply comes down, runs through it and then runs out. And it's predominantly fresh water. We'd heard about a ferry that takes you between the two lakes. Um, it's a free one, so we thought we'd go and find it. But we quickly learnt that we need to check our maps before relying on Google Maps before we head out. It's a good tip for those playing at home. <laughs> so you might hear all the noise in the background. We've just driven to where we thought the Narong Ferry was. Apparently Narong and the Narong Ferry are in two different places. So we had Google Maps took us right to the end of a dirt road. Nice corrugated road that we're driving on now. That's all right, all good. We're out for day trip, so see what we find next. We ended up doing a full tour of the Kurong National Park inadvertently. Um, wasn't so excited for me because of all the dust and the corrugations in the cars we're driving mm -hmm. along. However, the boys were super pumped because they got to see a dead seal, which is something <laughs> you don't see every day. So they were over what there exploring. Boy, that. wouldn't like that. Absolutely. Um, we regained some trust in Google Maps in the end because we did find the location of the ferry and it took us across. Um, it was a good ferry. The boys were a bit underwhelmed to start with. A little with. bit underwhelmed to kick off. Lots of pelicans to spot along the way. So we've just arrived at the Narong Ferry. Finally, we found it. And it appears to be right there. Is that the ferry? Yeah, that's the ferry. Goes from this side to the other side. Is that all? It's pretty cool. And people can go on there too, they can sit there. We're a floating car. You sure this is a cat yeah. just to make you float up down the river? To the lighthouse up there. That's Australia's only inland white at lighthouse. Not all sightseeing goes to plan. We had high hopes for our first pink lake, but this time it wasn't meant to be. We're at Pink Lake Meninji. It's not very pink right now. The sign says that it gets dry in summer due to the high content of carotene, which is actually what makes it pink in the first place. However, it's not very pink right now. It's pretty dry. We had a great time in Meninji, but it was time to move on after a few nights. So we headed up to Tail and Bend. Now this is just below Murray Bridge, which is the largest town in the Murray Lands. And we were joined by some pretty unusual campers. We arrived at the Tail and Bend footy ground. We're staying here for the next couple of nights. The Jamboree is on at the moment, the Scout Jamboree. And um, the guy said to us on the phone that there's a few buses here at the moment. Well, he wasn't kidding. I don't know how many there is, we'll have to count, but be at least 50 or 60 I reckon. If you've watched series one of the To Doing Family episodes online on YouTube, you'll know we're caravan newbies, so we're basically trying everything out, uh, learning how everything works as we go. The easy level gadget was one that Justin had snuck in, but I have to admit it's been really handy and very useful. Just put up here at and we've got a fairly flat ground. There's a few undulations as we go around. What we've got is we So being caravan newbies, you would have seen in one of our setup videos in series one that we added a battery to the rear of the car as an auxiliary battery to run our fridge. We added the fridge so we could carry extra food as we go around the lap of Australia. But we've had a bit of trouble with it in that we didn't realise how much having an enclosed fridge in the car set to the highest setting, sounds dumb now, mm. uh, would actually impact the battery. And we ended up getting it amazingly flat. 
batteries, when they become flat, they go into a hibernation mode. And what we found was when we were driving our car around, it didn't actually charge it up. It wasn't enough charge to get the battery back online up and running. So we had to do something to bring it back online. Check this out. About an hour ago, we were dead flat in the car. We've put out our solar blanket. We've got a long lead all the way back to the car. And as you can see, this is an Anderson plug lead. This is red art gear we run here. And if we come back in here, we've got charge. In fact, if I go inside, go inside the car. We're now up to 13 volts, which is just awesome. So from flat in an hour, using our 190 watt solar blanket straight to the battery. We're running lithium, so it absorbs it a bit quicker than AGM, but that is an awesome result. We were blown away by the results. We've partnered with Red Art for this trip and we have some amazing gear, but sometimes when you're a novice, mistakes still happen. Absolutely. We're still working out how it all works. We now know that we need to give the car a good run to be able to charge that auxiliary battery as we go. We've adjusted the fridge and how cold it actually gets, and we use our Red Arc solar blanket as we travel to keep it charged. We've done that at the beach, national park, mm. different places where we're unplugged from caravan park electricity, and it's absolutely running like a treat now, so mm. it's pretty cool. Um, if you want to check out our setup for Red Arc, there's a link, another link on top of this video, and you can have a look on our website, and we've got all the information of what we have for this trip. Taylor Bend was really, really hot, so we went back to our old favourite, the Murray River, and went for some evening swims. We're just going for a swim with all our friends, these galahs. I forget their technical name, but uh, they're all creaking away. So we've got this bit of waterfront down here, and um, there's a little bit we can hop down into. There were kids swinging off this swing yesterday, so it's a good spot for us to have a bit of a dip. It's been 40 degrees in Talon Bend, and we're down on the Murray, having a paddle out in the water. It's cooled down nicely, and the boys are using their life vests just to float around. And it's good. The next day we headed off to the Jamboree where 10,000 scouts came from across Australia and internationally to come together for 12 days of camping right in Talon Bend. Those numbers exploded on the visitors day to 20,000 people on site. Mayhem. Just coming in to Jamboree visitors day. I We're here at Jamboree, we're just heading in at the front gate. There are 18 different countries represented at the Jamboree, including Australia, and every state or territory was represented as well. We had our local group represented there, so we went and checked out their site, and then went for a walk around the rest of the Jamboree area. So, we're here at Jamboree, and you can see the ground and the rocks that they've had to put these tents into. They've done well. This is what it looked like when they arrived. You can see just the stone, sandstone. So they basically had to pre-drill with a hammer drill and then bang in the pegs into the pre-drilled holes. But they've done well. It's only two days to go. Everyone's well. It's done really good. So we just left visiting our local troops um, area. You can see behind us, it's fairly desolate. There's stones everywhere. They've had to drill into the ground to peg their tents. Um, but it's pretty cool. It's got a good scouting vibe. It's, it's a bit of fun. He's got frogs and stick insects at home. We haven't graduated that far. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah. Last one, Jed. Beautiful. Alright, the boys are going to go up this big slide. We've got plenty of activities here. You can see how dusty it is. So, they're going to get to climb up and, uh, oh, they're going to jump. They're not aware of what's on the other side. They think it's a slide, this should be fun. The 
Jamboree was actually held at the Ben Race Track in Tail and Bend, so pretty well known for racing. And they had a free car museum, so we went over and checked it out while we were there. Good taste. Yeah. We didn't spend a lot of money in Tail and Bend, as most things were free, and we managed to find some budget accommodation at the Football Oval that was ten dollars a night. It was really nice to give our budget a rest because we've been traveling during peak season. We've been paying really high caravan park rates. Good to average it out. Yeah. This has been our home for the last couple of days. Whilst we attended Jamboree, just hanging out with buses. And our caravan tucked away there behind the trees in front of this footy oval. It's pretty open. We get a lot of wind, but it's been fine for a $10 a night accommodation. So pretty happy. There's some great parks for picnics and playgrounds and things around Tail and Bend and we spent a fair bit of time at the Steam Train Playground uh, which had lots to explore and see. Okay. Loves a good animal. He's a good animal, Wow. Name you and a kangaroo. We've had quite a few people come up and say hello, which has been really, really awesome. We'd hope to meet lots of people as we travel around, and we love having people come and say hi. There's plenty of travelling families as well as grey nomads as well, and it's actually the reason we've got so much branding on our car in the back of the van. Mm. So if people see us there, they know that we're not just locals on holiday, we're doing a lap of Australia, so it's been great for everyone who's come up and said hello. And if you do see us out there, feel Please free to hi. come up, say <laughs> hi, um, we have a drink, have a chat, and hopefully you can give us some tips on your local areas like so many people have already done so that's been fantastic mm -hmm. we had the best time in the murraylands it was great obviously the jamboree was a big highlight it's not there always um, so that was really interesting for us but it was time to pack up our camp head off and go on for our next part of our adventure we've got another big week planned so see you then we're heading off today we're down to the fleur coast flurio coast we have to work out how to say that in south australia Today heading off to Victor Harbour and then we'll be exploring the area from there. Looks like there's stacks to do. Plenty of cars coming out. We're, we're heading in on a Sunday, the second week of January. So hopefully a lot of people are heading off and it'll be a little bit quieter by the time we get there.